Hey everyone, over here at the shop, the time has come to try to get the Mazda hooked up to the hubs. The Mazda is going to be the test meal for this deal. So we got the hubs, going to open up the boxes. We have the adapter hubs in there and then some other stuff, all the electronics and all of that. I ended up getting um, a laptop in. I got the laptop that they recommended. So we have a laptop here and pretty much that's it. Just the laptop, electronics, hubs, hub adapters to get this thing hooked up. I think I'm going to run into an issue. Uh, with these studs being a little too long, might have to shorten those up to get the hub adapters on, but we'll see how that ends up working out. April's back here filming. Alex is hanging out. My dad's, well, doing whatever he does, I guess. But uh, so, yeah, we should be good. Another cool thing that we came up with, uh, myself and my dad were kind of trying to figure out a way to power these things because you don't get any sort of power unit. Uh, cords or anything with the hubs. So we came back to Pueblo, a buddy of ours, Bud, uh, thanks to him, he kind of helped us come up with this design and put this thing together. It is actually pretty cool and we'll talk more about it here in a little bit. So that will help us plug in. Uh, here at the shop, we have two 30 amp plugins and the unit does run off a of 240. At my shop, I don't have anything yet, but I'm gonna end up getting something. But it's not a long-term plan to have it in like this shop or my shop by any means because they're both in residential areas. So hopefully here in the future I can get these set up in a shop. But let's go ahead and get started with getting this all set up. <laughs> you just come close. You don't need me in this box. All right, so we'll go ahead and get started with this. Um, one of them I've already actually been into because I needed the key for the software. So. All right, so this is the electronics that I'll need to hook up. Get the Dynacom box out. So this is the main module for the dyno. Uh, air fuel, RPM inputs, uh, USB to the computer, and then these two hook up to the each pod. As you guys can see on the back of the pod, there is some plugins here. So you have a primary pod and a secondary pod that will end up hooking up to the other side so they talk to each other. Have some, I believe this is all for the air fuel setup have a magnetic base for, I believe, the uh, optic pickup on this deal. And here we have the cables to hook up all of the uh, hubs. So one of the important things they told us is make sure you do not cross the 240 with the cables that feed back and forth to the two hubs. So we'll get all this set up and hooked up. This is probably the power and USB for the main box here. So we'll go ahead and get some of that ran. And then other than the cables. So in this box we have some controls. This is the main controller pendant that will be with me inside the car. Another power supply and then this is the O2 sensor. And then this and this little uh, RPM I box here. That will be the RPM pickup. And then this little guy is actually the weather sensor to uh, calculate all the weather. So then you can have all your corrected numbers. And then this is a NTK sensor for the O2 that hooks up. Some of this, I don't have to have the O2 sensors, but it'll be good to have like a reference to back up what's hooked to the car. Like the Holly already has a sensor in the HP tuners. You usually have a sensor that ties into the MPVI-1 or the Pro or whatever you have. We'll uh, get that stuff set up here in a minute and we'll go ahead and look at the other box. Go ahead and check out the second box. So we got some magnetic tool trays inside of those. Some t-shirts. Wheel chocks to help uh, hold the car in place while we jack up on the back of it. And then, so these are the adapters. So each of these adapters, uh, this is, I ended up getting the five lug because this will fit mostly what we got. We already checked with uh, some of it. The bigger 5.8 studs don't quite clear, so I might have to clearance them out just a little bit. So this is five on four and a half, five on four and three quarter. And I think there's one other pattern in here, five, uh, five. five on five. So that, that should cover most of the cars that we'll do. And then I also need to end up probably getting a six lug adapter for uh, it's like single cab Chevy trucks that I seem to do some tuning on. 
use the other adapter for the other side of it. And then it looks like they actually did give some uh, connectors for the dyno, but we already grabbed some and wired it up. I guess you just unhook these and then rewire up your own plugs. So we did a little bit different, uh, but either way it should work out. Got a big banner to go up in a shop once we find a permanent place to put it, or semi-permanent. And then here's the hardware for the adapter. So you end up getting all your hardware here to help mount the hubs. And then you have this hardware here that actually screws in the backside to help push the hub off. So once you get a car hooked up to it, you go on the wheel there and they slide on here. And then that's a machine type fit. And you have these other bolts that'll screw in there to help pop those back off when you're done using them. So I grabbed one of the hubs, we put it on here, kind of measured right here, and hopefully it clears this lip. If not, these will be too long, but as long as it clears, we kind of measured it, it'll be real close. Might get lucky and they'll actually sit just to the inside of that, so you gain uh, just that extra room right there. What it does, uh, these have the 60 degree nut on them, so this is what we use on the Mazda. On some of the race cars, you don't have this type of nut on them, but uh, this is how they're designed because a lot of factory vehicles use these so help center the hub onto the wheel and then we'll get it We'll end up pushing this hub up in here and uh, seeing if it'll go on there yeah, no, tilt, tilt it up Let me kind of see where it Yeah, that's not working too bad. That's got to go. You got to get over more. You're not. You're not in line with it. There you go. Oh. Okay. Got to set a bolt in there. Well, I need got to put that in neutral or this. You got to spin it. So you got to back it up or hold like back it up. Let me get it close. What's that? Done? I got. Turn, I can turn this since it's oh. got the weight on. I can't turn. I can't do nothing with it. Yeah, you got to lift. Up. Now pull it back. Oh, that's up. Hmm. Yeah, it's definitely not. That should be. Yeah, so it clears the studs, so we know that now. So. Yeah, that's good. There's just that little bit of. like the guy on the Super Bowl commercial here in a minute. Mm -hmm. That side is all bolted up. So my dad and Alex are over here working on this unit here, trying to get it lined up. And so both of these are now hooked up. Once you get it there, uh, you put an extra turn on the hubs to kind of put the weight on the feet and not on the wheels that the hubs sit on. Got these all bolted up. And then you leave the tension on the jack, so it's actually the jacks holding the weight of the car. So then you're not putting extra stress on the bearings of the hubs. So otherwise, it's looking, looking pretty neat. That's starting to run wires over, so we make sure we don't overlap anything there. And uh, otherwise, look at Clyde. This thing looks tiny compared to the hubs, which it is pretty small. But uh, right there, and right there. So 
pretty neat. All right, so we just spent a little bit more time. I had to finish hooking up this box here uh, that can, goes to the controller and everything inside the car. Got it set up. And then there's some drivers that needed to be updated on this. So they tell you, you go through this driver setup, you have to do it all on the computer and everything. And then if the weather station, everything's hooked up, everything is correct, you'll end up with this little lightning bolt right down here in the corner. So I have the software pulled up, lightning bolts there, everything's good to go. So what I did yesterday is I emailed Dynacom and they said, once you get everything set up, get everything ready and give us a little bit of a heads up and we'll actually jump in there and view your computer and go over the run with you, make sure everything's working, everything's correct. So I'm set up tomorrow about 10 a.m. We're set up with them for about an hour. Paul, the one that gave me the class, is going to split screen or view in here using like TeamViewer and sh just make sure everything goes smooth, everything's working, everything's connected correctly reading right and all of that uh, and then we should be ready to rock and roll on the other side we got the, the crew back here hanging out but here is the electrical box that we came up with we have two extension cords here that will run over to 30 amp fuses here in the shop that's what we have uh, 30 amp breakers here and that's fairly common in some shops that'll have that and then also some shops the requirements for the machine is something in a 50 amp uh, capacity to call it like 60 230s will be 60 each pod can pull a maximum of 25 it's like a 50 amp breaker would work too so if i go into a shop that has a one single 50 amp i have this plug here so we built a extension cord as well for it so this here can plug into that and then this would go over to a building that has a 50 amp plug and pretty much makes this unit plug and play as long as you either have two 30 amp plugs or one 50 amp plug. So pretty neat deal that we came up with uh, to make this thing pretty much portable. Now even though they're not extremely portable, it's semi portable and will work in multiple places. So definitely big shout out to my dad and Bud. Uh, I'll introduce you guys, he'll be around I'm sure at some point for building that and coming up with quite a neat unit to help plug this thing in and power it. Also, also something that's really cool on here is we have this power switch. So more or less, it's just gonna kill power. Yeah. Instead of having to go over, like if we were to leave or whatever, instead of having to go over and unplug out of the building, you can just flip this, it trips a contact inside of there and kills power to the unit. So it's kind of like a safety switch too. If something goes weird, something happens, all you gotta do is reach back here and pop this and then it'll turn it off. There's fuses in here as well, um, just in case it gets, I guess, a voltage spike or something like that. So kind of a little bit of safety built in as well as making it more universal to use. Before we fire a car up inside is we kind of hooked up this little exhaust deal. Ended up a little short, so I probably need to get a little bit more for in the morning. Uh, it's 14 to 17 degrees outside in Colorado. So I'll bring some of that foam that I used in the other shop, uh, extend that out and get most of the exhaust out. Hopefully that'll work out pretty decent. This is some trial and error type stuff, but at least we're not just sitting in here with a bunch of fumes. And also we don't have to run it with the doors open the whole day. So tomorrow will be the first time that we make pulls on the dyno. Hopefully everything goes smooth, but you guys will have to come back for the next video. I hope you enjoyed this one, setting everything up, getting it ready. This is not the fastest process, but I wanna make sure everything is good to go. So when we do fire it up, hopefully we have zero issues. If you wanna see the Mazda make some pulls on the dyno, make sure you hit that subscribe button and we'll see you in the next video.